So to start a new project, you open your GarageBand and this screen pops up, which prompts you to create a new empty project. Now, if you know the time signature, the tempo of your project already, you can click on details and set all of that up. For now, I'm just gonna leave it at C major, 120 and 44 time signature, and I'm gonna click choose. Now, the next thing you'll need to do is choose what type of recording you would like to do. Are you using a MIDI keyboard? That's a keyboard that's plugged into your computer. You can also use the keyboard that's built into GarageBand already. We'll do that today. You can also record vocals. You can connect your guitar, bass guitar to the computer and record directly into GarageBand with that or add a drummer and we can do that later. We click create. And now this big screen pops up and it might look a little bit intimidating, but I'm gonna guide you through everything so you can understand what different buttons are. So because we don't have a MIDI keyboard plugged in, you will notice that this uh, built-in piano keyboard pops here, but for now I'm just gonna close in. The first button is your instrument library. So if I click on it, you will notice that it closes the library. When I click on it again, it opens the library. There are all sorts of different sounds. If you want to try them, you can go ahead and do that at any point. But you will notice that sometimes some of the instruments have this little download button, which means that there might be some instruments within the packet that are not downloaded yet. So if I want to do that, I can either download them individually or just click on the download button in, for example, electronic drum kit and download the whole packet. The next button right here is the smart control button. This allows you to add reverb and then edit later the EQ of the instrument and the effects and all sorts of different things. But for now, it's just good for you to know what it is. We're gonna do more about that in other videos. The next button with the scissors is editors or editing button. Later on when we record in our track right here, you will notice that you can see piano roll in this area right here. You'll see the piano right here. You can see the sounds. You can edit some other things within this editors. You can also later on see a score. It's actually going to be a music score, which can be really helpful sometimes. The next buttons right here are rewind, forward, stop, play, record button. And the next one is cycle. And what cycle does is when you press it, for example, right here, you see that there's a yellow line that appears. And what it will do is it will repeatedly play or just record in this section of your song, which is really useful if let's say maybe you wanna just record a short part of your song, you don't wanna record the whole melody or all the vocals, or maybe there was just like one part of the vocals that you didn't like, and you can easily move the cycle around you, basically just click on it, hold and move it around anywhere you like. In this black uh, square right here, we have the position of our playhead. First, you will notice if I'm changing and moving the playhead around, this number is changing. And what it tells you is the bar and the beat. So this is bar or measure number one, measure number two, measure number three, and then beat is number one, then changes to number two, three, four, Five. Now, sometimes you will notice that the workspace might be a little bit too small or too big. So what, what you can do is you either pinch out or pinch in on your trackpad to make it larger. You can also use, there's a little toggle on the right corner. You can also use that to change the size. So you will notice that now it might be a little bit easier to see beat two, three, four, five. The next section in this black box is the tempo that you can easily change. You can just double click on this number and type in the number that you want for the tempo. Of course, you can also change the time signature here later on if you didn't set it up at the beginning and same for your key. Now this black box can actually have different settings. So 
I usually prefer beats and project because it tells me a lot about everything, but maybe sometimes you want to only use time. So you will notice that it's giving you seconds and minutes and so on. You can also have only beats or beats and time. The next icon right here is the tuning fork and this one you can use if you have let's say a guitar plugged in but in our case right now we can't really use the tuning fork. There are then two purple buttons that are following. The first one is count in button. What that button does is actually really useful when you are recording and what will happen is before you start recording you're going to have in our case four beats count it in first and then you start recording so then you know exactly how fast your tempo is. Here's an example. So I click so it's all purple, press record button and now you will notice the playhead after four beats was at beat number one. Metronome again very very useful when you're recording so you can always hear the beat the, the speed of your song The toggle right here is the master volume of your project now on the right here We, we have two other tools. The first one is notepad So let's say you're creating a song Maybe you want to add the lyrics and you can you know write the lyrics down Maybe you want to write the chord progression that you use in your song Just so you can always remember it. So that's actually really useful and then the last little icon here is the loop browser. So every GarageBand already has pre-recorded loops that you can use. You will notice that in the loops you have the number of beats, the length of the beats. You can then search by instrument. You can click on organ for example because maybe you're using organ and you notice they're eight beats long and maybe you do the scriptures, maybe you need something melodic and so on. So again, if you want to download these, just press the download button. Ben, and now the next thing is our track header, which is right here. The track header usually has two buttons. The first one is to mute your track. So when you click on it, it becomes blue and mutes your track. The next one is solo button that means that for example if you have let's say three different tracks it's really useful because you can only eliminate and listen to this track when you press solo if you want to add more buttons here you can right click and then go to configure track settings and two useful ones are track lock and record enable. What these two mean is that currently right now because record enable is red, I can record in this track. If I click on it, it becomes gray. I actually cannot record into this track even if I press the record button. The other one is track lock, which means that maybe you've completely finished this track. So it's very useful for you because you don't want to accidentally record anything new in this track and that's exactly how you want it to be. Another button here is catch playhead. It's always good to have this catch playhead on. It's on when it's blue. It's not on when it's gray. What this means is once your playhead moves, let's say to the end here, the display is going to continuously follow it and it's going to move with it. If it's off, then you won't see where it's moving. So I actually think it's a good idea to always just keep it on. Probably the most important button right here is this plus button, which adds new tracks. So to add a new track, you press plus, you choose an instrument, maybe you choose a vocal that you want to record over your instrument, and you can just press create. Let's go maybe again with just a MIDI instrument um, or a software instrument, click create. And then you will choose your instrument. But again, also you can leave it as any instrument you want and change the instrument later. So that's not super essential that you change your instrument right away. Now, let's say that you added this track, but you actually don't need it. To delete it, it's very easy. You press either just delete button on your keyboard or sometimes you will need command and delete. You can also right click on the track here and just press delete track. There are a few other things that you can do with the track. I can change the name of my track. So I just double click on the name of the instrument, type it in, um, let's go with harmony, 
and then press return enter button. Now another thing that you can do, especially if you're going to have quite a few different tracks, is you can change the color of how you will be recording right here in this workspace. To do that, you're going to click track in the menu bar and then assign track color. So you see there's all these different colors that you can choose from and maybe your first one is red, for example. So when I start recording now, it's going to, the track is going to be turned red, I'll show you. Now again, if I want to change this color, I can just press track, assign track color. If I close the window already, track, assign track color, maybe I change it to light blue. And then what you can also do is you can change the icon of this track. To do that, you go again, menu bar track and assign track icon. And that was a basic introduction into GarageBand. If you want to learn more, make sure that you subscribe and check out my other videos. Thanks for watching.